Hey guys, welcome back to another, another episode here on CrossFit Garage. I'm here with Josh Stidham, and we are going to have an awesome conversation about CrossFit, how he started, how he got to Woodstock, how he got his wife involved, um, how he works for a sporting company that's now going to partner with uh, Brady's Pickleball Company. No, I don't know if that's true yet, but we'll see. It's going to be an awesome conversation. We just did the 6 a.m. class where he, uh, I thought I crushed it, then I looked up, and he's already on the bench sitting there looking at me going, Andy, what took so long? I'm like... Great, I didn't go as fast as I thought. All right, so here we are trying to help you build a firm foundation in fitness, food, and finances. We also do member conversations so that you can learn about your fellow um, classmates, member mates, uh, gym mates, something, and um, just have a good old time. So, Josh, we're going to start off with the easy one. How did you find yourself here in Woodstock? Because it is an awesome city. It's in the top 50 of awesome cities to live in in the Woodstock magazine. We label ourselves in the top 50. It is. No, it's, it's a great place to live. Um, the way we got down here, basically the real driving force behind it was I have two other brothers. Uh, we're about a couple of years in age. Uh, grew up big baseball fans um, all the way through. Uh, and during the 90s, Braves had TBS, so we watched a lot of Braves. That ended up turning into kind of family vacations. So we would kind of travel down here every year or two. So that kind of you know, spark my interest. You like, got to oh, know this Atlanta. place is nice. Yeah, it's yeah. not cold in April. So where were you coming from? Ohio. Okay, so um, for those who don't live in America, I, I know we have some Australian downloaders. This is probably my cousin, uh, Devin. Thank you, Devin. Um, Ohio is, uh, I think, out of the 365 days in the year, 364 of them are filled with snow. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> not quite there. That's going to be like Michigan, but no. Um, but yeah, so we'd come down here for vacation, and obviously the warm weather... It's going, you know, the place you want to, va- the place you vacation is kind of always typically somewhere you'd want to live. That's right. right. So, do um, you guys typically would you hit like uh, just Atlanta or would you go to the beach or the mountains? Because we got it all. Or would you go to Stone Mountain? Because we got a big rock that has become famous. Just Braves games. Okay. Yeah. Like it right. was, it was the thing to do. Um, what do you think about the new field that they've got here, the the Battery Park? Uh, I, I love it. Um, one thing I didn't like about Turner was there's nothing built around it, right. so it wasn't as fun to go to now it is and i know a lot of people don't like the tax side of it and all that but um the seats themselves like it's hard to get a bad seat there but also it's just a lot more family friendly and now that um i'm to the age where i have a three-year-old um it's more fun yeah to take isn't, her it, to a game. isn't it crazy how your your mindset changes on these things you're like okay yeah there's a like a, a, a dual income no children like married couple like yeah we can do whatever we want right. to spend money anywhere then you get a kid, and, you're, and we're thankful for that, but it changes everything. You're like, right. can I change diapers in here? Can I actually move the kid through this? Is there a place to sit? Do there's food that they would actually eat? Is it places where that are quiet? I mean, it's crazy how much that changes in your life. Right. Yeah, but it's, it's a good change. But right. um, So my uh, uh, sister's boyfriend, uh, fiance, lived down in Battery Park. And so we would go down there every once in a while. Never actually go to a game. They loved going to the games. I never go to the game, but we would do all the fun stuff around. They had this uh, this uh, VR simulating, like man, it was a Jumanji experience. So you put on the glasses. You're wearing a backpack, like it's a small computer. And um, I thought, ah, there's no way this is really going to make me like dizzy or feel weird. There was a couple spots when you're walking along a fake edge to a cliff, and it is just the weirdest thing. You're like your mind is it, it's hard to separate it. You're like, I feel like if I step off here, I'm a little nervous, but I know it's just carpet. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird. So yeah, there's totally cool things to do, go do down there. Um, escape rooms, dinner, all that sort of stuff. Right. So that's cool. So you guys leave Ohio, then you make it, you decide Woodstock. Why Woodstock? Well, actually, we, prior to here, Meredith and I were living in Chicago. Okay. And so we were there for, she was there for like seven years. I was there for five. We were about that age where we decided Chicago was no longer the place for us. It were you actually like expensive. downtown? Yeah, so oh, we wow. were like downtown in the South Loop at the time. Uh, we lived a couple different areas, but it, yeah, it was it was great for that time period, the younger, you know, 20 to 27, um, roughly. And then we decided, hey, we want to kind of go settle down somewhere. Um, right. And we looked at kind of the options of where we wanted to move. Chicago suburbs weren't it. Um, then we, yeah, Atlanta was high on my list. I convinced Meredith, like, hey, let's let's go so, check it out and let's move down here. Um, she wasn't really into it. She wasn't like she didn't want, know for sure. Uh, she, she was open to it. Okay, um, and she's it was supportive of all of it, but she had never been to. A, she might have been here for, for I don't know, something at some point, but 
I she, think she, she didn't said, have a, she didn't have the connection that I did. Right. So I think she said y'all the other day. So she's fully southern now. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's, I think she might have ordered in. sweet tea. I mean, yeah. she's like. <laughs> she's all in. She loved. Yeah. So I remember the first trip we, we took down here. Was this kind of like introduce her to the city, and I think we came in. I think so once again March April. So we fly down. First thing we do is go to a, a brewery. I think it was like Sweetwater. Went to the sat on the patio in March or yeah. whatever time. It's like it uh, it's like zero degrees in Chicago. It's I'm sitting here, you know, hanging out in the warm sun. She's like, yeah, I think I can get in. Got on board with this. So there's two things in Georgia that are not the best. The the one is when um, in the spring when the pine trees let loose with all their pollen yeah. and it's the green Christmas. Like yep. everything is green for like a week or two right. and just breathing that in. You're, and I mean, guys, if you haven't experienced, it's like snow, except it's little tree pollen right. seeds or whatever. I don't know. It's pine it trees. It turns but, everything yeah. mustard yellow. Oh man, it is crazy. Pine. It doesn't last long. And then you hope for the rain. And then the other one is in like late, Aug- late August or early September when it's like 106 yeah. with like 99% humidity. <laughs> and you're just like, I mean, I literally, I told people, like, we would work out with the doors open here at the gym. I'm like, it is hot. We now have a ceiling fan, but it's still just moving air. It's moving hot air. I'm like, if you feel funny, stop. Because it's, like, 100 degrees with all this humidity. And, yeah, it can be taxing. But if you can make it through that, I mean, you can make it through any workout. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, and I like being warm when we're working out. So I'm yeah. like you. I come in with pants and a sweatshirt. And that's usually, I'll keep that on as long as I can until... Eventually, I usually sh- sh- uh, shrug it off. Sh- yeah, yeah. I shed one of the sweatshirts, or so I don't sweat. take them off right now because I feel like I want to work on some of my mobility, and I know being super warm yeah. helps with that. Now, here's the funny part: you actually have to stretch. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm like, well, I roll out. Does uh, okay, I'm gonna work. add. Yeah. So now I'm, my stretching that I'm adding is I'm sitting in the, the stiff legged or V leg position for like two minutes. I'm like, yeah. whatever. I can't take a lot of stretching, but Anything is better than what I'm doing because it's almost nothing. All right, so that's how you guys found yourself in Woodstock. Have you done any of the, uh, like, bike trails or the running trails or any of that stuff out here? Yeah, so we moved down here. We moved down here February 2020, so right before things got really crazy. Um, And the one hobby or sport I picked up then was mountain biking because gyms shut down temporarily. At the time, we were living closer to the battery. Right. Um, I was going to Crossover Surgeons for, like, short period of time before they kind of close things down. So yeah. I knew I wanted to stay active. Um, and so I bought a mountain bike and Soap Creek mountain bike trails was like just down the street from where we were living. So you could hit that. I would just hit that kind of like a couple times a week yeah. and try to maintain some kind of health and fitness. Have I lured um, you into adventure racing yet? Have I mentioned that? You mentioned you? it. I'm interested. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So it's on like my, there is a podcast about adventure racing that I did with Eddie while we were going to an adventure race. But in a nutshell, it's a redneck triathlon. So you, you get a topo map and a compass, and then you run bike canoe, well, jog bike canoe, to different checkpoints in the woods. It's super fun. And yeah. the weird thing is, like, uh, Evie and I did a, a – we, we signed up for a, a, a 10-hour race. And then we were the only two that signed up. And everyone else was doing the 24-hour race. So he's like, look, we're not doing the 10. We're just going to do the 24. So the cool thing is, we're like, that's fine. We can cut the race short. And he's right. like, yeah, that's fine. So we turned it into a 12-hour race while everyone else was doing 24. Right. Like, yeah, that's fine, whatever. So we finished – Way sooner than everybody, and we didn't win anything because we did. We missed half the course, right. but we had a good time. We're out in the woods, whatever. So it's not like a uh, triathlon where you have to go like the whole distance. Right. It's basically be, be smart, cut, cut off what you want, and have some right. fun. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at in terms of a lot of the oh, yeah. uh, challenges I take on. It's like have fun with too it. old to get myself hurt because like I can't be in a boot for multiple months and. Right. Hopefully that doesn't help happen anytime soon, but like, yeah, there's just different priorities. So it's like, right. I still want to dabble in some of that stuff and like push myself and throw challenges out there. But at the same time, I don't want to have it impact my wife or my daughter. Or, right. Yeah. There's you know, nothing worse than like, whatever, so. I, like I was a traveling sales guy and then you'd catch something or hurt something. I'm like, I get through the airport or whatever. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm out yeah. and I can't be out. Right. So you end up trying to work through that stuff. So I tell people now, and I, I think it's the phases of life, whether it's you growing like 
getting older and getting that wisdom or the phase of life with kids, marriage, whatever. But there does come a time when you're like, like in the gym, hey, t- yesterday was um, uh, one rep max snatches. I love that movement. I'm not going to do a one rep max. I, I'll do like sets of two and three. Because I know the, the edges of getting that one rep max, there's a chance for some sort of failure that I don't want. But if I'm doing a weight that's like two or three, I mean, I can handle that. No problem. Yeah. So it does change. So I tell people, like, do whatever you can in here to make sure you can come back tomorrow, yeah. as well as find a problem you're trying to solve. What is it? Is it, you know, I need endurance, I need strength, I need to fix the diabetes, whatever. I mean, pick the problem we're solving. Right. You know, if you try to solve too many problems, like I'm taking creatine and I'm taking you know, steroid boosters or whatever. I don't know. I'm just making things up. But you're, you're, you're solving too many things. Pick one thing, controlled experiment, and then grow through with it. Yeah. So now you found CrossFit um, before. So you've had us. You did the resurgence. But then in Ohio, you found CrossFit, right? Is that no. when you found it? So no. Before kinda, that. Okay, yeah. Tell us yeah, the origin kinda, story before you became a villain. villain. Yeah, so I'll kind of give you like my entire <laughs> health fitness background. So like I said, touch on earlier, baseball is a big background. So I obviously played sports growing up. Baseball is what I kind of honed in on, uh, really just focused on baseball once we had high, high, high school. Um, Did the I, basketball coach hate that? Yes, basketball yeah. coach hated So you guys that. can't see this that. unless you actually know Josh. So I am like three foot two, and Josh is nine foot six. So we're like, you know, totally different. And uh, yeah, I'd imagine you would have played, no, so no basketball. No basketball. Okay. I did it like through you know, middle school or Did whatever. you pitch in baseball? Yeah. Okay. Because so that's, that's the other thing. thing. If you're tall and you can pitch, your arm with the acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it worked out well. Um, what was your favorite pitch? Basketball. Yeah, because yeah. you have the, exce- yeah, yeah, totally. The angles. and Right. The, um, yeah. So that was kind of like the, my sports background. I went end up playing at a Division three school in Ohio. <laughs> Um, so continue on baseball, good opportunity, helped keep me kind of focused through college, which is good. Um, and that continues like leak through my professional life now. I kind of stuck with sports in different fields we can talk about. But yeah, um, yeah. so did that. And then after I graduated from college, obviously my playing career was done. Um, I decided I still wanted an athletic outlet. And I actually joined a um, gym close to my house. I moved back home right after school. It was a hardcore bodybuilding gym. Oh. And so I wasn't a bodybuilder, but yeah. I, it, I, I knew I didn't want to go to the big box fitness. or Like the global gym. Yeah, the global yeah, gym. Uh, it yeah. wasn't my thing. It was, you know, I wouldn't have been able to stay focused. So, so Levi I, is doing some hypertrophy work, and he has joined the local, uh, I don't know if it's One Life or whatever it is he's in. And he's like, Dad, after years of being in the CrossFit gym and then trying to go to these gyms, yeah. it's insane. Like like this, I was doing some sets, and then I stood up to go get some water and came back, and the guy took my bench. Yeah. And now uh, I'm, like, fighting with this, like, 50-year-old nuts. man over a bench. I'm like, I was in sets. you know? And he's like, Dad, who does that? I'm like, yeah. well, I think that's actually kind of normal. You just grew up in a <laughs> very right. different place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that thing, in fact, that bodybuilding gym kind of had that same, you, same, uh, not as big of a community as since here, but you knew kind of most everybody that would come in at six o'clock or whatever yeah. time you'd come to, like you'd actually have conversation with them. Yeah, well, you need spot. spotters, right? In the global gym, like everyone headphones on, right? And if you ask for a spotter, thing. that's almost like you and they get coffee, huh? Right. Uh, right. Yeah, you don't ask for spotters. Yeah, so it, it was cool and it got me around people who were training hard and they were focused on their health and probably to the extreme side. Um, the owner of the gym was actually a former IFBB pro, so like they had some very aggressive guys but from there uh what actually intrigued me there was a group a small group of guys who were kind of like in the corner of this gym who focused on powerlifting. yeah and so from the sports background it kind of interests me more than the bodybuilding side because like you said i'm nine foot tall right i don't have the frame to be a bodybuilder necessarily I don't have a frame to be a uh, power lift either but um but a fast some, pitcher yeah, somehow and got, a pole vaulter. You could have pole vaulted. Not that there's much money in it, but you, you've got the frame for that. I, I don't. That's what I did. And they're like, do you know you're too short? I'm like, no, how would I know that? Google it. I'm like, in the 90s, you couldn't Google that. So how was I to know? Um, so, so this is actually, here's a good distinction. So you have um, bodybuilding, which is going to be not just hypertrophy, which is, hey, I want my muscles to be bigger. Stronger for sure, but it's really I'm trying to get them bigger. But then they'll actually do like 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 short curls to like get the like the 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 head muscle of your bicep right. to grow so it looks 
better. So bodybuilding for competition yeah. or bodybuilding them on the beach and it looks pretty sexy hot or whatever, yeah. right? And then you have powerlifting, which is really three main lifts. You can probably add more lifts to it, but it's uh, typically it's a, a back squat, deadlift, and bench press. Yep. Is that right? And so <clears throat> you, you can go to competitions in these things. Right. Did you actually go to? I did. Yeah? So okay. I got like hooked on it. Um, did you wear a bench press uh, I had a uh, sink, shirt? I, I, did, I never got into the geared suits. Yeah. Um, we had some guys at the gym that did do that. I never, I always did it kind of raw and you'd wear your, your basically like similar to what you'd wear in wrestling, a singlet. Um, I did so a tell them what raw is in suit. Cause I only, I mean, I've been doing this for 17 years and I had no idea that this existed. So g- give the guy, the, the listeners, what is like, if I, I'm going to go to a powerlifting competition raw or I'm going to go with a suit, what does that mean? Okay. So for all powerlifting, um, you're allowed to wear in most like federations from I remember, uh, you can wear a weight belt, you can wear some like wrist wraps or straps, maybe some knee sleeves. Um, that's about it. But you're relatively with minimal equipment. And the geared side of powerlifting, there are squat suits and bench shirts. So which... let's go into bench shirts. So <laughs> you guys tell me if this is legit. As an outsider looking in, I'm thinking bullshit. But I mean, hey, it's a sport, whatever. So yeah. and, and it's a division. So you're, it's they're not mixing thing. them. So I'm yeah. like, hey, I really think they should have the steroid uh, Olympics. Like, hey, t- if you want to jack up your body, because they do anyway, yeah. and you want to do the Olympics, like they have the X Games, like this is the steroid games, whatever, go do it. If you if you want to do that to your body, I'd like to see it. Right. <laughs> so if these guys want to lift at these. So what is it when they put a bench press shirt on? What does that look like? Yeah, so it's hard to explain, but it's, it's, imagine putting a T-shirt on that kind of, pulls your arms together. It's just like this thick nylon material that basically, when you're bench pressing, it's you, when you lower the weight down, it kind of acts like a rubber band, essentially. To push you. Yeah, and it'll push the weight up for you to a certain extent. So, couldn't you say that if you can spend enough money to get the right gear, you could actually lift more, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you're like, okay, so now I'm just paying for the shirt. It, so, guys, Google it. If I can, I'll find a shirt. I've seen some of these. There's now like these V-cut ones. And it's like got bands between the arms, so it really pulls them together. I'm like, what is going on here? So in general, I'm against gear. If it hurts, don't do it. If you need gear, let's figure out why in general. But I'm okay with gear. If you want to do that, I'm totally fine. Like have shoes, whatever. But I definitely think it's a weird thing. (laughs) You're going to go to a competition and put a shirt on. Now, the fact that there's like divisions for it, again, I'm totally fine with that. If you're into it, go for it. It's not hurting me. That's right. It doesn't hurt me. Go smoke some marijuana in your basement. Invite me over, but but, yeah, whatever, in your own home. At the same time, I can't speak, I can't talk too much smack because the guys that were in that were way stronger than me oh, for without sure. it. So I, yeah, yeah. So it does uh, help. Yeah. It um, totally. And, it, and it if you can lift sport. more, it builds more. Yeah. But it is just a weird, like, I'm lifting in the raw. I'm like, what does that actually mean? So yeah. you have broccoli on you? Like, no, that's not what it means yeah. at all. Okay, so you did some power lifting in the corner with these guys, and you got intrigued. You're in um, the world of I'm wearing a singlet, which I wrestled, so I'm totally in. Right. But people out there, if you're like, what is a singlet? Yeah, go Google it. You're going to be like, dude, you wore that? I'm like, I did. Four years of high school and a little bit of college, we, and he did it in power lifting. We wear that stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's just the gear you wear. Right. And then, um, so what happens? You find yourself somehow moving out of that, right? Yeah, so I got, I played it there for five plus years oh, and um i got towards the tail end of it i got to the i started feeling that loss of athleticism i got i was very strong but when it came to like hey, i need to run a mile or a bunch of other like there's like you had to do a gymnastics move it and it wasn't happening it's a trade-off yeah and you're right like, so i was going i was leaning too far into one extreme right. so well um, too far for you. Yeah, yeah right. right. So everyone so finds your goals. my goals. Yeah. yeah, and what are your goals? So I, I have a problem in here with CrossFit. CrossFit is a general physical preparedness. It's generally, like, we do a lot of things. So yesterday we did Snatch, and someone said, uh, we, so in the evening class, it was uh, it's winter break, so there's a, it's a light loading, so I can really dig into people. And they're like, oh, wow, I haven't tried that before. And it's been a while since I did this. I'm like, well, yeah. And they're like, we should do this more often. I'm like, well... No, it's a hard lift. It's in the Olympics. But if we did it too often, well, now we're becoming an Olympic lifting gym, which isn't what we are. But like, yeah, but I want to be better. You're like, yeah, but you also have pull-ups and you also want to run. And like, I want all of that. I'm like, okay, we, <laughs> if you want everything, you have to give it up somewhere. So you realized I'm giving up too much cardio or too much gymnastics because I'm leaning too much into this. And what'd you do? Yep. Yeah. So I decided I wanted to start transitioning out of it. So um, I didn't immediately jump into CrossFit. I actually started doing a little bit more 
programming or training that was similar to what I did more in college for baseball. So like a lot more explosive, maybe some plyometrics and stuff like that. A little bit of cardio. Yeah, I fell back on what you knew. Yeah. I like so that. I went back to that a little bit. Um, at the same time, it was like, so I guess it was probably like 2018, um, the CrossFit Games, I think were in ESPN at that time. Oh, yeah. And like I started watching some of those guys. It's like these guys are lifting 300 pounds. They're running a mile in six minutes. Like there's something going on here. So what also didn't happen at that time, we moved apartments and uh, probably two football fields down from our apartment was a CrossFit gym. So I said, you know, Is this back this in good, Ohio? This is actually in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, this is a good opportunity to go test it out. So I, they did the similar thing where they do, we do here is the on ramp thing. So I sent you an email, one on one consultation, bring me in. Hey, what are your goals and all that? Got everything lined up and, you know, Started that way. Yeah. And it, so how did their one-on-one uh, go? What did they have you do? I'm, I'm fascinated because, so historically, we've done a lot of stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we've learned through, uh, don't put your tongue in the socket. Like, like people would say, hey, I want to try CrossFit. Like, great, just jump in class. I hope you don't die. <laughs> and yeah. we're like, I can't believe we did that, right? Yeah. So much better to on-ramp them and get everybody comfortable. So yay, we found it. But I mean, these guys are doing this already, and you. This was years ago that you found it, right? So yes. they're way ahead of us. So um, did they? Ha- was it one on one, or was it a small group, or how'd they have you guys do it? Yeah, so it was one on one to start. So I think they brought you in. I'm trying to think back now, I th- they think the first session you just came in and talked. Yeah, we do that. So we'll do a no sweat yeah, intro. I just come talk to us. I think that's what they did. Sometimes it's not a fit. Like people will be like, like I'm going to the games. You're like, yeah, I don't know for that. Gym, but we've got friends that can help you, so we'll like put them out. Or they say, I'm bodybuilding. I'm like, yeah, so CrossFit's not really bodybuilding. What is your actual goal? Yeah. Usually, if we talk long enough, the goal comes out to, hey, I want to live a longer life with be able to interact with my kids' kids, right? It's a that's kind of who we are. We have longevity and whatever looking mm-hmm. forward to. And part of it is learning to move correctly. So, okay, so then they take you through a couple sessions, yeah, so and then d- you get into class. What do you think about that? I remember like one of the first classes was. It was something like an echo bike, and it was supposed to be double unders, but I didn't have double unders at the time, so they actually had us do um, like hops over the hurdle. Yeah, yeah, sure. And this is the first time I could get like the sensation of like cement block legs. <laughs> right. And I know I got off the bike, and I go to take the first jump, and the, like the owner clo- coach was like watching me. You know, I was the, new to the class, and like I almost eat it on the first one. And he just starts like giggling. Yeah. <laughs> and like. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a fun, like, I was like, okay, yeah, this is intense. So this is true, and, and we warn people all the time. We did we did a workout the other day. It was, um, it was a, uh, oh, man, it was like six 30-inch box jumps, yeah. and then some push-ups, and then max row for two minutes, and then rest two minutes. And I warned everybody. I was like, look, when you go back to that box jump, your legs are going to have that cement feeling, so yeah. make sure you're good to jump it. Like, yeah. stretch your legs out, because... You're going to think, oh, I can do this, and then your legs just will not pull up like you think they do. Right. Fortunately, nobody hit anything, but I think one of the most incredible things about what we do is you learn your body, right? And then you're like, I just went crazy on the bike, and now I can't really jump. What the right. hell just happened? And that's fascinating to know your body's, I don't know, limits or trajectories or whatever. Like, h- how does it function under duress? Yeah. Something I'm thinking about, about it now is, like, they were smart enough to put me in a position not to really hurt myself, right? right. Like, I trip on a... This plastic hurdle. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna knock it over. If anything, I break it. It's not gonna hurt me. But right. they knew that going into it. Like, hey, let's start slow, um, and yeah. So it slowly progressed. Um, so we do that too. So it is funny. So typically, the ladies that come to the gym are totally fine starting slow. It's the guys who are like, hey, I want you to go slow and easy on this one. It's you did your on ramp. It's your first day in class. It's going to feel more on you tomorrow than you think it's gonna feel now. And um, they're like, no, 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 it's all right, it's all right. And so we've got one guy who just started, and he even said, he was like, you told me not to do it, and I did it anyway, and now my shoulder bothers me. I'm like, that's okay, now go slow. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go slow and easy. So it is, it's funny that it's a, like, kind of like a gender thing, like, girls, like, yeah, I'll, totally, I'll listen to you. And the guy's like, no, man, hold my beer. Right. You know what I did in high school? Like, it doesn't matter when yeah. I'm not in high school anymore. Yeah. That's... <laughs> well, it's good that you listen. That's awesome. Yeah, one thing I've been pretty good about through kind of all – like weightlifting training history is to try to leave the ego at the door. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this prior to this, but like in terms of form and function and things right. like that, like I hope I, for the most part, do pretty well on most of it. But a lot of that comes from not having an ego right. 
Don't worry about the it. weight. Right. Take your time. So, yeah, okay, I'm going to back this up and say that you and Meredith have awesome form. Um, and you're, so you're not nine feet tall. How tall are you? Like six, seven. Yeah, so he's six, seven. And many tall people will say, I can't squat because, insert the answer. And your wife is, well, she's not six, seven. She's way taller than me, yeah. which I'm like five, two. So it's easy to be taller than me. And she moves really well, too. So yeah. you guys have put attention to detail. And you, you, in, in a squat, you can catch low and your hips are below the parallel. And in, in, in a, I mean, any of the movements, the, the kipping, all of it. So I find it fascinating that you don't let that, well, I'm tall, whatever. I'll just like own that and be like, cry. You're like, okay, well, let me figure out how do I do this? And you'll ask, hey, does this look right, right? So sometimes when we coach, we're like, hey, a little bit more, a little bit more, people will be like looking at us like, seriously, are you saying like stand up more? And like, well, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. But you'll, you and Meredith both will like look and ask for it, which is great. Um, yeah, so you guys have impeccable movement um, and with a height that some people would say, well, you shouldn't be able to move that way. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I'm yeah. gonna. I'll find some videos of you guys and try to link them so you guys can see. They move great. Um, a lot of that I think comes from both of us have sport backgrounds, and I know at least for me, my goal for being in the gym was always to get better at the sport. Yeah. So if I come in and do a quarter squat, is that helping me become a better pitcher, throw harder? Probably not. So no. it's like I'm going to do proper form. That way, it translates better. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Like now, it's. I don't need to come in and do a half rep of something where my goal is to be able to do that full lift or full. full right. Um, or get the full benefit of the movement. So right. there is, there. so I tell people when I'm coaching, like um, uh, the other day when we were doing snatches, I said, hey, after 17 years of CrossFit, I really think some of the secret, like I joke, hey, and that's the secret of CrossFit. So some of the secret is get below parallel. So your uh, hip crease below your knees in a squat. Do that. That's going to be good for you. Be able to stand up, sit down, mm -hmm. right? Right. And then take something heavy and do that and then put it above your head, right? So have a gymnastic component on your body and then take an external load and move it. Those are some of the, like, so basically the thruster, while I hate it, is probably the best movement you could yeah. ever do because you're Bow parallel, you're in a squat, and then you're taking a weight above your head. And that right there is going to have an effect of longevity. Like, I will live a better life because I'm squatting with some heavy weight. Right. It's a beautiful thing. And it doesn't have to be, you see what I do in here. I mean, I do what we say, and I kind of don't do the extra stuff because I'm here five days a week. So I'm like, I don't want to do extra. I'm 50. <laughs> My big thing is make sure I can come back. Yep. But when the open comes, what I'm doing has still the same effect. I'll score well in the open because CrossFit is constant, constantly very functional movements executed at high intensity. You're going to have an increased work capacity over yeah. different times and movements, right? So yeah, it's, it's seriously the hack of all hacks that I've ever found for fitness. Um, okay, so uh, you then convinced Meredith to start. And her story from this is probably going to be different from you. So you, how did you get... I, I have a hard time getting half of my family into CrossFit. Like my, <laughs> Two of my siblings actually coach or own a gym. And then the other two are like, I'm not sure. And my brother just joined finally. And um, so you tell Meredith, hey, this is something. I found some Kool-Aid. You got to drink, yeah. drink this Kool-Aid. How did it go down in your mind? Yeah. So go back and listen, guys. Go back and find Meredith's podcast and you can hear the, the, the different stories. It's going to be awesome. So, so how did you tell her you need to come and do this? Yeah, and she probably so had just a, had a baby too, right? Or was no, she, this is prior. So before, this is okay. in Chicago. So we were, yeah, it's like... Um, yeah, that age where we didn't have any other, like you said, any other Dual income, no children. Yeah, yeah easy. Kind of do your own thing. So I knew I didn't have any problem going to that CrossFit gym, even though it was a little, like, scary going to it because it's something new. But coming from, like, my sports background, like, I could probably adapt pretty quick. Um, I know she had a sports background. I know and I, between both of us, we prioritize health and fitness. So I, she was, at the time, I think, going to, like, Orange Theory, trying that. She wasn't very consistent with it. Um, you know, she, I think she did LA Fitness for a few years prior to me moving to Chicago. It didn't click. And She's an it, athlete, which means she probably wants to be coached. And it's much easier to have a coach lead you through it. Yes. Yeah. So she want, I think she, so I, that's one thing I noticed when I came to the CrossFit gym. I said, she'll enjoy that. She also, even more so than I do, enjoy the community aspect. Because I knew right away, like when I joined the gym in Chicago, it's like, oh, like, these They'll people are friendly. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, people you see every day, it's like, 
that good thing and keeps you motivated. Right. And so I knew I had yeah, to. You, so another kudos to you. You're super consistent at the 6 a.m. and you get your group of people. And then, I mean, that's just awesome. That's how do you win in investing? You do it every day. Right. You invest. How do you win in health? You invest in yourself yeah. daily. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So I knew that was something. If I can get her in there long enough to get that part of her or get her to see that part of it, the scary the movements, the snatch and kind of the clean jerk and some of the gymnastic stuff she would learn. Right. And so I basically, I don't know how I actually convinced her, but I think <laughs> I pitched the idea like, Hey, like you'll enjoy these certain things. Like, you know, sign up for it. Like I'll, I'll go to class with you at the time. Okay, I went there to, you go. To class. Yeah. So like, Hey, if you're not comfortable with something, either us, there's a coach, like that's the first person I asked, but like, Hey, look at me. Like we, you know, yeah, you, help you give out. me the look and like, if you're not comfortable, I can either help or like, right. At the same time, like if you're overwhelmed, you don't have to be here. You can just walk out. Right. And well, not, and that's no. like, that you can also turn anything into, Hey, guess what? I'm doing deadlifts and push ups today. You're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We're okay with that. Just be who you are. Yeah. So and I think it's, so that's all it really took is like once I got her there, um, so that's in, over, that's in Chicago still, right? Yeah. Okay. So then she's, what did you guys like cross it for maybe two or three years up there or something? Yeah. It's probably <clears> two years. Came down here for, I think I was at CrossFit Resurgence for about a year, and then I've been here for two. So I am really bad with ages, because you had already said back when I was 27, I would have thought, like, I don't know, you guys are like 25, 26. Uh, yeah, so I'm... Yeah. I've got a baby face. So I, it's awesome. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Except, so I, I used to, then my hair turned gray, and then I got liver spots. I'm like, what's going on? That's just junk that happens as you turn 50. You're like, right. wow, what's going on? I don't know. Um so, yeah, so then you guys come down here. Um, her story was interesting, and it's, it's, it's fascinating to have somebody that um, knows you in a different way. So it's your wife who knows crossed it through you, so she's going to ask you different questions, right? So right. my brother recently joined the gym, and he's like, oh, it's just Andy, my brother. So I'm going to ask a lot of questions. Or my buddy Cam joined. Um, he, he put his mom in a, 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 an elderly home, and he's like, Andy, what do I need to do to not ever have my kids put me here? I'm like, just join a CrossFit gym and just do whatever they say. Right. And so one question he had asked was like, when can I use chalk? I'm like, well, I mean, I guess whenever you want, but maybe not on a jog. That sounds weird. What would you chalk on a jog? He's right. like, okay, there's no like, like I'm a red belt, and I can, I'm like, yeah. And so right. my brother asked me questions, and I'm like, that's fascinating. I, I wouldn't have thought someone wouldn't have known that. But, of course, why would you right, know that? Like, right. Why would you? Like, we say things like, come to the whiteboard. There is no whiteboard in here anymore. Right. The whiteboard is a TV. Right. And until someone pointed that out, I'm like, huh, you're right. We just would write it on an old whiteboard right. and say, come to the whiteboard and let's look at it. And now we still use the same word, but it's a television. Yeah. Or it's not television. Is it? Actually, it is a TV. It's, it's I TV, bought a yeah. TV with, so it's got because it keeps going on pause. Yeah. But it's fascinating to have somebody else's journey with you. And them ask you these questions, you're like, hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I probably never would have thought of that. Yeah. I think so it, she had, that, she that benefited she had, her a lot. Yeah. Um, I remember prior, like they released the workouts prior, you know, half hour before class. We would kind of sit down together. She would have like, okay, the hang power snatches. Right. Remind me what these movements is. And like I'd go through it. And I think that helped a lot, yeah. right? So you don't have to know these things. A the coach will help you. I still have members that are like, okay, what is the – squat cleat was a power cleat and you're like that's okay i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna show you right. you don't have to remember it it doesn't come up that often or actually that one does right. but yeah so it is it, it it's funny in in terms of why would you know like right. i should i should say that all the time like some of the weird ones are like hey can we put a pool in i'm like no we're not gonna have a pool but crossfit woods p program today's a swimming day right you're like well main site program swimming you're like yes but how i can't they're like, well, there is a neighborhood right across. We could cut a hole in the fence. I'm like, actually, we could actually probably pay them to let us use their pool. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. We can't swim that well. Um, okay, so then you guys move here. You end up in Woodstock. How did you end up finding the garage? I mean, literally, I, I passed like three gyms on mm -hmm. the way to our gym because <laughs> we've been here for so long. So you get all these gyms to choose from. Why, why do you, how do you find us? You Google us, or how did you end up here at this place? Yeah, so... Um... Trying to think. I think it's probably it's a Google search. Yeah. So CrossFit near me, something like that. Yeah, CrossFit near me, and it was. I think there's probably three within about the same ten to fifteen minute period. But I just kind of chose this one. Um, I know I looked at the website, looked professional, and 
We did um, pay for it, but thank you. So yeah. Well, yeah. So I mean, it looked good, and then like. Uh, there is. So it's crazy. Like Up in this area, there are so many gyms, and I tell people all the time, "Hey, start with close." If you don't know the uh, flavor of gym or community, because they're all going to be a little bit different, mm -hmm. if you don't know the community, just start with close, and then don't sign a contract. And if it's not you, then try the next one. Right. But if it's close, you'll it's it takes away a barrier of entry, right? Right. Until you create a routine, like you're here at six a.m., which means probably the night before you put clothes out to the side. You, okay, he, you can't the, see it. He's shaking his yeah, head. Yes, that's what I do. That, that was the biggest part for me. So I actually took about nine months off of going to a gym so we, um okay that's a big break so that's so almost we, enough to like ruin it yeah so we, we basically had my daughter um at the same time we moved this when we moved up here um from closer down near the brave stadium um, bought a house uh so over that nine month period one thing i did i said hey I, i'd spend x amount of money on a gym membership let's just buy a little bit of equipment um, until we get life settled down a little bit and our yeah. sleep schedule's back on track, I'll just do some fitness here and we'll keep things somewhat afloat. Didn't work out all that great, but um, that's when I said, you know, like nine months in, I was like, okay, I need to get back to it because it's good for me, but I need to be able to do something that's consistent and like make it part of the routine. So I was like, it's got to be close because otherwise there's, like you said, an obstacle Buried that's in my way. Yeah. So I said, you know, like, it's probably the closest one. Um, you know, it's a quick shot up here. Class times worked out well. Um, and so will you do the routine of like you take your clothes out the night before and put them on the side? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I got. I do yeah. too. If I don't do that, it messes up my whole routine. Yeah. I've got the entire, like my, my gym stuff is in one pile. My work stuff's in the next. Right. Like, it's all, it's all laid out. So I just can wake up. And are you going to, to an up. office now or do you go for, or do you work out of I the house? I go in twice a week okay. typically. Like I'm after this, I'm heading out there. Okay. Um, but yeah. Typically, I don't want to wake up in the morning and try to fumble around. One, yeah. everyone's still asleep at the house, right. so I don't want to wake anyone up. But So have you ever seen that book, The Five Love Languages? No. So it's a good book. You should read it. It really helps you explain, like, yourself and then, like, your spouse or your children, too. People are different. and they Anyway, so this guy postulates there's five love languages, but I have found a sixth love language, and that is sleep. So yeah. do not wake your my wife. I'm like, okay, what do I have to do to keep the lights off? Be super quiet. And so maybe it started out of uh, like courtesy. I just don't want to wake her up. But then it became this routine of if I can take my clothes out and bundle them up right here. And then, of course, the dog doesn't go and eat them. Right. Then I can just grab them and walk out. But it sets everything up. I'm in workout clothes. Guess where I'm going? Right. To the gym. Yeah. Yeah. So the things that throw you off are like, <clears throat> so, and these are good throw offs. Evie just got her learner's permit. She cannot drive. So, guys, in most states, especially here in Georgia, the, the, the other driver in the car has to be 21. So I tried to send my daughter with, or my son with my daughter, and they're like, you can't do that. That's illegal. He's not 21. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Right. So, yeah, don't break the law. Uh, so if she wants to learn to drive, we got a 20-minute drive to school. So every day she gets 20 minutes of experience. Mm -hmm. So I gotta, it's going to mess my, my routine up. Right. But... You force rank the stuff in your life. What's most important to me? Hey, family is way up there on the list. So is fitness, but I can take my block. So I have a, I block my calendar out. So there's an hour of fitness that is going to happen. Usually at 7.30 a.m. If it can't happen there, I just slide it to one of the other classes and then I move things around. And I do, I Tetris my schedule on a daily basis to make it all fit. Yeah. 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 It's something like it's the mindset too for me. It's, hey, I go to the gym at 6 a.m. Yeah. Oh, I love Five it. days a week. I go to the gym. And that's it. Does I'm it always happen? No. Like, I think it was yesterday uh, or Wednesday, my wife had to take my mother in law to the airport. I need to be at home with my daughter in right. the morning. Okay. Right. Because it's that's, still. That's going to happen, right? But. It's bad parenting it, to leave a three year old at home by themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so make wise choices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm still hitting the gym then four days a week, right? I went Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, fr uh, Friday. So I, That's right. I do the same it's thing. It's better than, like, hey, I'm going to try to you know, mix and match all the time. It's just like, try to be consistent and then you're going to miss because life's going to happen. That's but right. over time, it adds you're going to hit more than you're going to miss. That's right. So I, I plan on five days a week. I would say I'm, I'm a normal, like nothing going weird. I'm five days a week. But like yesterday, I had to go to court because I got a, a rental property where a guy hasn't paid me in four months. Uh -oh. And I'm like, I don't know. Let's go to court then. I mean, if you're not going to pay me, what do I do? Right. So anyway, I have no idea how court works. And it messed up my whole day, right? I didn't work out. 
you know what I didn't do? I didn't cry. I'm like, right. whatever. I had four other days of working out. Yeah. And I, I took the dogs on a longer walk. I'm like, I got some movement in, whatever. Right. So if you're consistent, missing a little bit here and there isn't a big deal. If you're inconsistent, missing matters a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. So don't miss if you can help it. Right. Um, so, yeah. So you mentioned work. So you, you actually work for a sports company. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I work at Mizuno USA. Um, Work mostly on the baseball, softball side of the business. Um, but I work in supply chain and operations. Okay. Um, How big is their pickleball operation? Uh, so pickleball so new, we don't have a ton. We have. You need we, to. We and then you need to make, meet Brady and his brother, who have a pickleball magazine, <laughs> bringing products to the communities. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think we do some like tennis shoes, which I think pickleball players I, may use the same shoe yeah. I don't so here's the crazy thing they come out with a shoe for everything and you're like it's just, it's just a shoe they're like no 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 there's a wrestling shoe right. and there's a boxing shoe they're different you're like why wouldn't it just be the same like no 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 no. there's a pickleball right. shoe it says pickleball yeah. shoe on it like there's crossfit shoes like it's just shoes but right. yeah it's so crazy yeah that's some money right there we're gonna have a crossfit garage shoe <laughs> logo yeah it's yeah so in, in the south anyway baseball's huge Right? Yeah, um, I got to imagine like yeah. that's a like well I, I'm it's probably everywhere but I feel like down here like even the rec leagues for baseball is like super intense. Super You're like it's a rec league. Like no 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you need to go play at church if you want like like real rec league. It's right. not. Yeah, I, I knew about it, um, kind of from being in the sporting world. Uh, how competitive it is down here? There's a lot of really good teams. But yeah. It, and it makes sense because you can play baseball basically by 11 months a year outside right. compared to open Ohio it snows for half the winter. So you can't. Right. Um, but I haven't first hand experience like the team side of it because I don't have a kid that age, but I've talked to a few people here who have 13, 14 year old boys. It's like, yeah, that's so intense. Coach Jamie's kids into baseball. Yeah. And then, um, do you remember Chance Beam? He, he's he, been a he long time member. Yeah. Titan. That's it. Yeah, so he talking. owns Titan. That was his yeah. thing. So he has a uh, an ebook that I read. It's fascinating to listen to his story, how he like went through uh, uh, college and then into the some amount of pros. And yeah, I I had no idea there was so much like technical stuff. Like he was talking about in the on the uh, field, like okay, so this is a right hand bat- batter. Everyone's gonna slide right. We're gonna do. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it makes sense that that stuff would exist, but yeah, I didn't play any baseball whatsoever. But he's huge into it. And then he said, uh, "What did I love it in his book? He's like, one day somebody asked me about the big S word. I'm like, oh, what is the S word? Softball. Oh. So he's like, we're not doing softball. Then he says, I have two daughters. So he's like, we're totally we're doing, doing softball. softball. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a 13, 14 year old niece now. I'm like, I follow her. So like, it's like, I never had because we had, like I said, I have three brothers, an older sister that never played softball, but yeah. got introduced to that world a little bit. And I'm like." Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, uh, so and Gabby played uh, college. Okay. That's yeah, college ball, and she was talking about the pitching and all that. I'm like, dang, where did she go? She went to somewhere. Was it Gabby that went there, or was it uh, Amanda? I don't remember. All my stories are getting mixed in my head. But there's, it's interesting, the number of you guys who made it like into college playing sports. So I'm curious. I'm always fascinated by like these linkings. Like, What makes somebody... like? like doing what we do CrossFit wise. I feel like one thing is we're okay with long suffering. Mm -hmm. So we just did a workout. You're like, well, it's going to be like seven minutes. Okay. I'm going to do it anyway. Let's do this thing. Right. Or it's, you know, it's a 40 minute slogger. Uh, Okay. I'll do it. Right. Right. I I don't know. I don't know what the like bits and pieces are, but I feel like some of it is I have a degree of, I enjoy that team aspect with a coach. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like, could we fill out a bubble sheet and like, this is us. And if you match us, swipe right. I, <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Yeah, to me is always like long-term. I think the ability to be athletic is like important to me. Like, I, oh yeah. I think it's like, like you're 50 and you're able to do stuff, climb the rope. And yeah. like, that's impressive. I, uh, one thing that was really cool recently um, when I was back home, I went to a, a different CrossFit gym um, and they had the class I went to was like, it was a different time. It was like nine thirty, So it was like, some older people in the class who were like doing the same workouts to me. I'm like, that's so motivating for me. It's right. like, I want that later on. And I know in order for that to happen, I need to place my bets now and hedge myself to like be that's able to it. maintain that. Otherwise, it's not going to be there. Yeah, it's, I'm not going to be able to recover. It's never too late, but it's like investing. 
if you, what do they say, like at 18, if you start investing $100 a week, then you're a bazillionaire. Right. But if you do the same thing at like 35, then you're only a hundred thousand or whatever, right. right? So it's like, you can get there and you can make some money, you can have a backing of, of cash, but you have to start sooner or later, right? Yeah. So yeah, so my peers are mostly in that 50 range and some of them have just started and some of them are like, eh, right? And it's interesting to see, like for me, I forget that I've got all this gray hair and I forget that like, hey, I'm probably one of the older guys in the gym because we're all moving and doing. Yeah, maybe slower and don't lift as much or whatever, but we're still here doing it. Right. And, and it's, it's weirdly, it's not like a miracle drug. I just go and move. I literally do what the coach says and I'm their boss. And they still tell me, Andy, lower. Andy, right. put your arms out. I'm like, okay, thank you. I mean, they still coach you, right? I love that aspect. It's like... Uh, all levels of socioeconomic or whatever. I mean, we have doctors, lawyers, whatever, and they're like, I'm getting coached. Right. Yeah, and so you just keep putting that on day by day. So my, my sticky why, like why I do what I do, is I want to be healthy and fit enough to coach my kids' kids in soccer. Do I care about soccer? No, it's just right. the, the word picture. And what does that mean? Well, I've got to have a good, my brain has to be there. So my, t- two of my grandparents had uh, mental issues as they got older, so I got to fight that. I need to be athletically, I need to be moving. I can't be overweight. I need to be able to stand up, sit down, keep up with, uh, I don't know, a 13 year old, right? So it's that picture of where do I want to be? And if you can have that picture, like you said, I'm more into, I want to have a longer life than I am interested in a 500 pound back squat. Right. I mean, yeah, we could probably get you there, but you would give up so many things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's by, and that's, like you said, like, well, the people you're around kind of, that's where your mindset shifts to. So when I joined this gym, it probably even sharpened that image a little bit more. Cause like yeah. you're preaching it from kind of leadership role at the gym. Uh, and then obviously you're living it. Like you're try to, you're, yeah, you're basically <laughs> you're a step ahead of me. So like, like, oh, that's actually a pretty good idea. Like, so one thing you should shouldn't do is worry so much about your food that you end up with chickens on your property. So, <laughs> well, Meredith is already <laughs> She's in, okay. interested. So, I so what you should do is buy chicken eggs from somebody already doing it, so yeah. you don't have to do all the work. It is interesting and fun and unique, but I think if I were to sell the eggs that I've got, they're like a hundred dollars an egg. It's like. The price to like earning ratio is so bad. It's not worth it. Yeah. So just find someone that does it. But it is interesting. It's like I would never have gotten on that track unless somebody said, well, what's the food you eat the most? Right. I'm like, well, I eat a lot of eggs. They're like, well, where do you get your eggs? I'm like, oh, dang it. And then you try to yeah. like go more. Yeah. So don't go down my road of now I've got chickens living yeah. in my backyard. Yeah, and I have a dog now to protect them. So I'm like, where does it end? I don't know. It keeps growing. Yeah. I've got a, actually, my wife is like, the coyotes were killing the, this is one good part about the chickens. The coyotes were coming out at night killing the chickens. And she looked at me, and she stared me right in the eyes. And she says, you do whatever you have to do to kill those coyotes. I'm like, whatever I have to do? So I ended up going to um, High Caliber or Big Woods, whatever the gun store's up the street. I'm like, hey, my wife gave me the license to do whatever I needed to do. What would you do to kill coyotes? And the guy's like, well, first there's an AR, <laughs> and then you need a thermal scope, Ooh, and you need a language. silencer on, or, or a suppressor on the end of the... I'm like, talk to me, baby. Talk yeah. to me. So, um, yeah, so it's a weird weird road to walk down. But if you need eggs, I mean... Yeah, we'll stick yeah, to Yeah, just to talk to us. We'll help you out. But it is... You don't need much. You can get, like, a, a larger doghouse and put two chickens in it, and they're going to have a pretty decent life, and they're going to lay you an egg every day. Well, for about two years. Yeah, it seems like a little bit more work than I'm willing to yeah. so put on pretty, my table right now. If you get them to free range, which, are you in a neighborhood with an HOA? No. Okay, well, yeah, you could do it then. The problem with free ranging is the hawks are like, hey, it's a buffet. It's time to eat. We so, have a lot of, I think that'd be our issue is we yeah. have a lot of trees that are... And it's illegal to shoot a hawk. Okay. And they, they, they don't know that they're your pets or they're your... I mean, they don't care. They're like, I just want to eat that thing. Yeah. So, okay. So let me run, look at some of these questions. We actually kind of went through a bunch of these. Um, oh, this is a fun one. This is always neat. What was the very first job you ever had? Like the, the, like I just got my license type thing and I'm having a job. Not, I got out of college with a job, but like, what was yeah. that first dirty job you had? Working random landscaping jobs. Oh yeah. La- labor type. Oh, very you know, like cool. Carry on mulch bags and so do you dig know, up stuff. It wasn't I know you know glorious. Him. Uh, He's in the morning class. Oh, man, Oliver. I couldn't think of his name. Oh, yeah. Oliver, yeah. So he's got his own, um, he's 13 or 14 maybe, and he's got his own landscape business or, or mow and blow. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm going to business. And his dad's like, man, he's making some good money. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to well, buy some equipment for him so he can really get this thing going. I would say just the learning process of all that, right? It's like, oh, I can make my own money by 
putting in some effort and then this kind of comp like you said one of this starts compounding yeah. and they give you cash and, they give and you're cash. like i'll just take this cash and put it away yeah they, i think that that first check i ever got when i saw how much taxes were cured me from ever voting for like should we put in no we used to never put in new anything again yeah. <laughs> down with all taxes i can't believe how much they're taking out and i was in sales so they took like your bonuses oh, right. and they like took like 50 percent. i'm like what the what are you doing yeah that was that was terrible yeah. um so uh, was that like uh, like homegrown? So you just like like did neighbors' yards around you, or did you like yeah? It's my friend of a truck or my something. My friend had a business. I mean, yeah, did a business where I'd help him. Like he would get a, a job, and yeah, basically, like I said, I was more the laborer. Oh, that's and good. So you let him yeah. do the work. You just show up and get paid. Well, I, I did the work, but yeah, he was hey, the one, I mean, he he was the one having to deal with like he's actual, at hustle in it. Yeah, yeah. I just basically got to pay the hourly rate, and people forget that like. Yes, your time is sort of free. It's whatever you want to charge it, but someone's out hustling for business. Right. What does that cost? There's a cost to it. As a kid, you're like, oh, I was either going to play video games or do this, right? But you can be the guy who just shows up and, hey, when you find the job, I'll take a little bit less money. That's fine. And do the work and get paid, but I don't have to go around and hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Another time, like, that's when I was still really big into baseball. So, like, oh, yeah, yeah. That was my priority, right? Right. Um, you get to school, fit it in. School, basically, like, yeah, it's like my parents kind of, hey, stick with baseball in school, like, focus on that stuff, and then work kind of on the side. Right. Like, so. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, three or four questions here. So one, uh, next one is, what did your parents or your grandparents teach you that you're like, ooh, that's really valuable now? Maybe it wasn't back then, but it is like, oh, that's a good lesson to live by. Uh oh, hard question. He's looking up into yeah. the right, which means he's reaching back into the memories. Like, yeah. man, think, they didn't teach me anything. Well, I'm trying to remember the quotes, but it's basically the concept. Like, my grandpa kind of what would always tell us is like, um, basically, you have multiple skills instead of just going all in on one. Trying to be well balanced. Yeah, um, I like the uh, uh, jack of all trades, master of that's, some, not okay. master of none. Like. Pick something that they're like, ah, oh, Josh right. is good at that. A little bit more, yeah. But he could also do these other things. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that was the quote I was trying to dig up. Couldn't get it. I, so that's... From, my, from my granddad, I didn't really learn anything like that. I learned that you can put a whole alcohol kit inside of a briefcase. <laughs> and that's like what they used to do back then. They're like, whoop, they would open up this like suitcase and there's like this like martini stand. You're like, what? What, is, what is that? Yeah, I didn't learn much from my grandparents. Well, I guess maybe some of them. <laughs> um, okay, so um, sometimes... Uh, or, or a time ago, we we had that billboard right up there, right? Okay. So what would you put on that billboard as people drove back and forth on 92? It doesn't have to be health and fitness. Model for life, or it could just be, you know, San Dimas High School football rules. I mean, whatever. What would you put up on a billboard for people to see? Um, could be something like, do something to make the world a little bit better today. Oh, yeah, I like, like pay it forward. Yeah, like whether it's doing something for yourself or others, like yeah. I think... Everyone gave back a little bit more. Just because they can. Be Not because someone told you to, right. because you should. Yeah. So when you're at like a Publix, uh, or, or sorry, that's a local grocery store. So if you're at a grocery store and you see a cart that's out, what do you do? I, I actually caught my mom. I'm calling her out in on this one. <laughs> mom! <laughs> yeah, she, she went to like not put it back in the corral. I'm like, I can't let that happen. <laughs> And yeah, so like I, she's like, well, put you can up, do yeah. it. I'm like, okay. So I will actually take them out of the corral, and my kids will always shake their head. I'm like, look, somebody's got to come out here and do it. We'll just do it for them. Yeah. Just, I mean, we need one in there anyway. Why right. don't we just bring one in? Yeah. They're like, dad. But I don't know. It's like, if especially if they put it up on the like on the curb to like sit there. I'm like, I'm walking in. I'll take it. Right. Yeah. I've even stood there to like wait for somebody's cart, like they're putting their groceries away, which I, I now recognize is creepy. I should have said, hey, I'm going to take your cart in, but I stood there, and they kept looking at me. I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah. I should have used my words, but in my mind, I had explained it. Yeah, I'm going to take your car back for you and be nice. <laughs> okay, yeah. so any podcasts that you listen to or books that you like, what would you recommend out? Do you do any of those? Yeah, so I guess we'll start, like, first off, there's a couple different categories. I listen to some fitness and health. One, oh, this nice. Being this yeah, pop- which ones? So, um the one I like a lot is the Ben Bergeron. Oh, yeah, Chasing, Chasing Excellence. Excellence. Yeah, I love that one. That's a really good one. Yep. Um, there's some like other CrossFit specific ones. Um, this yeah. one's pretty good. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, so I, 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 I go to work twice a week and I have an, it's about an hour commute both yeah. ways. So I have like four hours. Oh, so, so you can totally. So do, can what speed do you listen on? 
one point two five. Okay, took, I'm up to two. I I'm, can't. No. Yeah, uh, it depends on the podcast too. Like I talk too fast, even for me listening to me at times too. I'm like, what did I say? So I sometimes have to back my own off. Yeah, but, but like I said, I got four hours in a car um, a week, so I can yeah. knock out four podcasts usually. I love the uh, the uh, I guess the, the chasing excellence or Ben's like five pillars of health mm -hmm. I, I love that model like okay that's really good yeah if you don't have those five you, you it's a, it's like the five level languages you got to balance these things out if you're not sleeping let's go for that first yeah. if you're not moving at all well let's first look at like your stress why are you not moving right so I'm, i love that um what do they call him and patrick they're like uh their frameworks that they're yeah. like putting together yeah, yeah. i love that like, stuff. they give you it feels like it's very you can put it into action in the real world. Yes. Like they give you, like you so said, the framework. So it's like, okay, how do I apply this to my life? And um, that they're doing it, right? So he's yeah. like, I was really into breathing. Now I'm off of that. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So I think there are times in your life for things. And I think you could dive in deep, gain what you need, and then come back out of it, right? You don't have to stay in with this breath work all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a really good one. The book he actually, I just read recently that he recommended was... I think it's called like Mindset by Carol Dweck. Yeah, the grit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like the, Isn't that fascinating? So guys, go look at that. It's a, um, uh, yeah, I think it is Mindset. Yeah. And she goes through this whole like military thing about why people would make it through the, with the Citadel or make it through Buds or something. Like, how did they get through this? And they're like, we can tell when we see them. And they're like, how? And they're like, she was trying to like figure out the formula. Yeah. And she came up with. Yeah, it was really, it's really good. Um, and it's kind of how I, now try to reframe things in my mind when you know things are going bad or whatever it's like how do i flip this in my mind before it kind of takes me down a path i don't right. want to go flip the script um so like was yeah. she the one that said um have to ver or I, I get to versus have to is yeah. that where that came from yeah, yeah. i love so that just, too and a lot of like i get language. to drive my daughter to school or she, she drives me i get to ride shotgun right, right. rather than i have to I get to. Because right. literally there are some people out there that wish they could have kids. So I get to do yeah. this. Look at it as a blessing, not... Yeah, if you can figure out how to do that, it's, it's powerful. Yes. Um, so yeah, that, that was just a recent read that kind of came Maybe off that. Maybe put that on the board. I get to. Yeah. That would be powerful. It'd be a good one. Um, they probably wouldn't understand it, but it's still, yeah, it's powerful. That's why I went with what I did. But it's so like, yeah, I've got a bunch of fitness related CrossFit podcasts. The other one is finance podcast. I, I listen somewhat to like the Dave Ramsey stuff. Yeah, but, I love Dave Ramsey. Um, one that I listen to most often now is called I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. Ooh, okay. So it's R-A-M-I-T-S-E-T-H-I. -R so he teaches a lot of the same principles, like, you know, don't spend more than what you make and all that kind of stuff. But what he really focuses on is psychology of how you spend money and like how you think about money um how that drives a lot more than actually like keeping your budget in the spreadsheet and the x right. and those of like so so um, there's a powerful thing oh, man I, I either heard it or read it and it was uh if you can teach your kids delayed gratification then it will produce a better saving lifestyle and so they did this experiment with kids, like here is a cookie. If you cannot eat this cookie, which is super fresh and smells great, for two minutes, I'll give you three cookies or something, right? They would mm -hmm. up the ante. Right. And the kids would like look at it and like try to like smell it. Some kids would be like, whatever, I'm just eating this thing. Right. So I would do that with my kids. And um, every once in a while, um, I would like, I don't know, maybe once a year, I'd say, here's a cookie, here's a muffin, if you cannot eat it. And so one time, um, Evie was old enough to understand what we were doing. And um, I said, hey, guys, here's these fresh cookies. We just made them. Everyone gets a cookie. There's one cookie right here. If you can, you can eat it right now, or you can wait two minutes. I'll set a clock, and I'll give you three cookies. And Evie grabbed the cookie, and Evan was, like, shocked. He's like, Evie, he's serious. He'll give you three cookies. All you have to do is wait for two minutes. And I was like, this is fascinating. My kids are dialoguing out the idea of delayed gratification. And she's like, well... No, and she ate the cookie anyway, and so she sat there where I gave out more cookies, and she's like, well, dang, uh, and you can see it turning in her head. She's like, well, can I get more? I'm like, well, yeah. no, because I told you that was going to happen, uh, so I did it the next day immediately again to see what would happen, and everyone just sat there and waited for the cookies. Learning like, lessons she learned quick. Yeah. That is fascinating, and, and they talked through it, and this, the face of my son, and he grew up to be that type of kid who's like, I get responsibility, and that's something I'm good with, right. but 
Yeah, that, I think that's even in, in Carol Dweck's book, uh, Delayed Gratification Along With This Grit, like l knowing it to slow it down. Yeah, that's fascinating stuff. The, uh, I just did a podcast with Scott Curley who went through the Dave Ramsey method of mm -hmm. like getting out of debt. I, I have used his methods. Stuff works. Right. And it really is the framework around what you think money is. Right. And it's weird. At my age, I, I, I'm sure if I polled my 50-year-old friends, they're all paying money for drugs that, like, like uh, uh, not drug drugs. Medical. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so whatever it is, I'm taking right. a stat and a thing or whatever. Yeah. If they would just watch what they eat and move, they probably wouldn't have to take any of that stuff. Right. But... I don't know. They don't. It's like you're spending a thousand bucks on medication when you can just go get like go to a gym like this or any gym, CrossFit gym is going to be about two hundred bucks, and they're going to walk you through everything, and you wouldn't be spending the money on that stuff. You need to live this better life. Right. But um, no, that's awesome. So I, I think something that I would tell people that you're doing that is beautiful is if you're going to drive, turn it into learning. Yeah. You have four hours in the car, learn something. Yeah. 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 I mostly try to focus on stuff that I'm learning from, but I also then have a couple like comedy podcasts. To right. You got to keep it fun. On the, line, on the way home, send like last last half hour, I throw that on and yeah. get some good jokes. And yeah, my son has got out. us into some uh, very interesting uh, fantasy books. I'm like on, on a tear trying to keep up with him. And it's all just for fun. They're interesting and make sure. me laugh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So you got to have some fun with life. I think that's in the pillars uh, for chasing excellence. There's that stress relief, yeah. right? And, and laughter is a big part of it. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, that's very cool. Uh, so last question is going to be, do you play Wordle? No. Oh, because it is going to be one of your starting got, words. Okay, well, you don't have starting got, words. I never got on that. It's fun. It's a good one. So I'm always looking for things for my mind mm -hmm. because, again, those two grandparents, I'm like, how do I fight the thing they had? Just stay active. There's, there's articles on Parkinson's and CrossFit and um, Alzheimer's and CrossFit. So I'm like, is it true? I don't know. But there are people who, with those diseases or conditions or whatever they are that I've gotten into CrossFit, and their personal testimony is this. And I'm like, fascinating. I'm right. going to believe the person who had it, and I'm going to keep doing this thing. Right. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Okay, um, any other one, things you want to tell people out there? Actually, let me, let me say this. Um, is CrossFit in general, general doable by anybody? Yeah, it is. Is right. CrossFit, should you be afraid and nervous? No. Just sign up, come in. You'll probably be a little hesitant up front, but there's a coach there for a reason to hold your hand through it until you are comfortable. And is it a hack to fitness? Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, which is crazy. You're like, I can come in here and work out for 8 to 12 minutes doing couples and triplets and get fit? Weirdly, yes. It's right. so against the grain. Like, I was taught you must do hypertrophy. Women were taught you must get on the treadmill and go for an hour and a half. You don't have to do that. It's so crazy. Um, uh, yeah, so guys, if you're in the Woodstock area, we're here. We're just uh, across the street from Black Rifle Coffee. Our mission is to help you become the hero of your own story. Um, we want to give you coaching, mentoring, and accountability as much as you'll let us. We do mostly moving stuff. If you want to work on nutrition, we have someone who can help you there. Um, if you want to work on goals or mindset or whatever, man, I am happy to help you guys. If you're not in the Woodstock area, then we have a podcast and we have YouTube videos, but I mean, we're kind of we're location based. You have to be here. <laughs> we don't sell anything out to the world. We do have a, a 32 at home workout program you can do. It's like minimal gear. And uh, we came out during that, that two weeks to keep everyone flat in the curve or whatever. Yeah. yeah I can't say that word. I think you get banned yeah. if you do. So uh, uh, we can give that to you for free. Um, yeah, guys. So we're here to help you if you need that help. If you're into coaching, mentoring, and accountability, if you are a happy, humble, helpful person who wants to be healthy and fit now, as well as in your nineties, then you're one of us. Come by and see us. Cool? Yep. Yeah, good do. job. Thank you very right. much, buddy. Thank you.